Hi everyone, this is going to be a good one. Custom GPTs from OpenAI's Dev Day have been all the talk of the town the last two days. But OpenAI just dropped an amazing API. It's called the Assistance API. And that will allow any developer to build chat GPT level assistance on their own applications. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Assistance API and even go on to build our own Streamlit application and demo it. Watch on. OpenAI just launched their Assistance API. This API gives developers ability to build chat GPT level applications on their own applications. What this means is that they can bring the awesomeness of GPT-4 and also pair it with amazing tools like knowledge retrieval, code interpreter, and custom functions. All of this is available to developers to build using OpenAI's backend. What OpenAI promises is a seamless experience. So things like RAG retrieval, reverse RAG, double RAG, all of that is eliminated because OpenAI suggests that their technology is smart enough to figure out what is needed and what is not. Let's jump in, take a look at a demo, and then look into the Assistance API more. All right, this is our Streamlit app that we built using the Assistance API. Um, as you can see, this is a Streamlit app. What I wanted to do was do knowledge retrieval from the Assistance API. On the sidebar, we have a couple of options. We can either drop a website, scrape it, get the data in there, and then use that data and do knowledge retrieval on that. Or you can drop some files and use that data and get knowledge retrieval on it. So let's try the uh, uh, website method out. So here I am, I'm getting the Wikipedia entry for our President Joe Biden, dropping it into our scrape and upload. What this is doing is going into the website, scraping it, making a PDF and dropping it into OpenAI. All right, let's start a chat. There was Joe Biden. What this is going to be doing is using the assistance API to go to OpenAI and grab the entry from the file that we uploaded and give us the answer. Again, all of this is done on the OpenAI's backend, just like how you would do it in ChatGPT when you upload a file, etc., and so on and so forth. Can we also do where we can add more files to this? Let's take a look. That is a fact sheet about the recent executive order that Joe Biden signed. So let's see if we can Again, what we are wanting the API to do is to go fetch the data from our two files that we've where the where the information is not able to distinguish, it will be clear in saying that it is not able to find the details. So here I've asked it to specifically go in there and use the uploaded data to find the information. So let's see if it's able to return to us the details. There you go. It is able to give us the details on the executive order. Again, executive order was very recent. There's no way that the data could have been available in OpenAI's training data. So this is a way that we can augment OpenAI's training data. So what was announced exactly? OpenAI announced Assistance API with Retrieval and Code Interpreter in them. Uh, what this will allow you to do is for users to build more powerful AI agents in their own applications. This brings in GPT-4 and all of OpenAI's backend into users' applications. The main part about this is that OpenAI has made input and the chat interaction with the chatbot persistent and infinitely long. What this means is that we don't need to worry about the context windows, etc., on how to pass the best amount of information. OpenAI promises that it'll take care of all of this in the backend. Let's dive in and take a look at what this Assistance API is all about. All right. I try to get the best visual representation of this Assistance API. So OpenAI's Assistance API has four main components to it. 
tools, assistance, threads, and messages. Assistants are AI assistants that you can give a custom set of instructions. They can also be tagged with using different kind of tools. In this situation, functions, knowledge retrieval, code interpreter kind of tools. In addition to assistant, we also have threads and messages. Let's look at the concept of threads first. Threads is your back and forth interaction that the user has with the agent. All the back and forth interaction that the user has with the agent is organized in messages that are under the threads. Messages have assistant or user roles, content, which is text, and also annotations if it is doing knowledge retrieval so that it knows where in which part of the document it's getting details from. You can pass files both at the assistant level or at the thread level. And that's an important bifurcation. What makes this awesome is that the threads is the singular back and forth interaction that you have with the agent. This could be infinitely large. What OpenAI promises is that it will have enough context and backend logic for the latest message. A run is where you are trying to run and execute the latest message in a thread. Now, before you do that, you will have to pick the assistant that you want to run that job for. Assistant 2 is the one we pick here. So all the tools associated with Assistant 2 come into the picture. And any files associated with the thread or the assistant also comes into the picture. You can also do a different run for the new message that has popped up using Assistant 1. So this allows your application to leverage any number of assistants to talk to the same chat interaction or the same user. For example, if you run a retail app and that person's interactions are all logged on one thread, you can have a returns application assistant go do returns and you can have an information gathering assistant to information gather. The life cycle of a run is pretty straightforward. Jobs are queued, jobs go in progress, they go to complete it or fail. You can keep polling your job to know the status of your job. This in nutshell is all what Assistance API is all about. Hope this has been very interesting. Let's take a look at building our Streamlit app. So what we're doing here is we are going to be going through our Streamlit app that I've built. We'll go section by section. We'll take a look at what everything does and how it all comes together. Before we jump into the code, let's take a quick look at how our app is set up. All right, in our Streamlit app, as you can see, we have a sidebar where we're getting some OpenAI keys. We're gonna get a website URL so we can scrape and get some data. We're also allowing users to drop their own files. Obviously, there's a lot of state management going on. I can kind of show you how that works. First things first, we're importing the basics. OpenAI, Streamlit, uh, beautiful soup for the scraping, uh, requests to make HTTP requests, PDF kit, and time. First things first, we're setting up our AI assistant. I have hard-coded our AI assistant here, and I'll show you why. But essentially, you can keep this as a user-defined thing, so you can get a list of all your assistants and pass which one you've selected and so on and so forth. We're initializing some state variables, and this is mostly around state management so that I am having a sequence of steps. If you're new to Streamlit, you should look at state management. If you're having a sequence of steps, you'd want to give incremental state management so that you don't run all of the code every single time you run it. After state management, we are having our functions for the sidebar. First will be our scraping the web to give our data to our OpenAI. Uh, we're using the beautiful soup, as you can see here. Um, then we are converting to PDF. I did include and perform the WK HTML to PDF um, service. You should probably download and set it up on your own computer. I'll drop a link on how to set that up so you can do that too. After that, we are having a couple of new API functions. These are OpenAI's files create um, and purpose assistance. These are new APIs and I will give you a link for the description to where these APIs are so you can take a look at them. But what you're doing here is you're completing this activity and you're uploading that files to OpenAI. And again, I am actually 
just generating a file ID. I'm not attaching it to any assistant yet. And I'll show you where I'm doing that. After that, we get our OpenAI key that, the, that you have given. And then we go out to do the scrape and upload. So once you do the scrape, it gets uploaded into OpenAI. So here, OpenAI takes in the file yet. It is still not attached to an assistant. What you're doing then is allowing a way for users to upload their own files. This is the function for that. Once you've kind of completed and uploaded that file, this is where we are going to list out all the file IDs that we've just seen, and we are going to attach them to the assistants. As you can see, the assistants API are all classified under beta. So make sure you put the beta tag. You can remove that in the code once it's out of beta. This is your new attaching files to your assistants API command. So this is how you do it. Then you would go set up your start chat button. Once you start the chat, it'll then take you to your back and forth with your chat. Two things that I said, threads are persistent. So basically a thread that was created in the very beginning, that will be the thread that you use in the rest of your chat. So we are creating a thread right here when we click on the start chat button. Now we go into the chat function. There is a extra function here that I've put in with citations. I'll explain to you when we get to there after we look at the chat button. So in your chat application, it is pretty straightforward. You're giving your, this is very straightforward. This is the new streamlit chat functionality. So I'm using that to go back and forth with my chat agent. The important API calls here are around adding messages to your thread. Again, important point is your thread is already set up. So all you're doing is adding messages to it with either a role of user or a role of assistant. So first up, we are going to add a user role. We're going to take the input from the uh, uh, chat part. We're going to take the input from the streamlit chat and send it to our threads. As you can see, this is the new API call for creating a message on a thread. Thread ID is the thread ID that I've set up for my session. And all I'm doing is sending the prompt as content. At this point, you're ready to run your job. Now, remember what the process for the run is. For the run, you would need a thread ID and you would need the assistant ID. Here we are giving an assistant ID and a thread ID and we're creating the run. The beautiful part about this is for every run, you can give your own instructions. For example, sometimes I may want to give a run instruction based on a special promotion I'm running or not. That's up to the developer on how they want to custom. Once the run is kicked off, and this is the kickoff for the run, runs.create. Once the run is kicked off, you are polling to see if the run is completed. That's where I'm using the time function just to check if um, the run is completed. Once the run is completed, I will then take all the messages that are in my thread and perform some logic on it. So remember, you, your, remember your inputs are role of user. So you expect the run to have generated a role of assistant, same way how you use your regular GPT-4 API. In this situation, we're taking the run ID that just completed and we're grabbing all the messages that came with the role of assistant. There could be one, there could be two. So we want to grab all of them. So once you've grabbed all of them, you're sending it to another function called process message with citations. This is where I wanted to kind of talk through what that was. In the messages, like I mentioned in the annotations, there's going to be some details. Sometimes annotations will be return, returning data, sometimes maybe not. But if they do, this is the suggested method of how you can kind of display those annotations. Let's go back to our chat window. Once you've cleaned up the annotations and described them, you can then just display the full response that includes the assistance response out there in your chatbot. This whole process goes back up and down, back and forth, and the thread keeps building. Now here's where the assistance API is really awesome for the developers. You can access your assistant in your playground. What this means is that you can check logs and you can update the assistant. You can update the instructions for the assistant um, and watch how your calls are being generated from the logs. 
and that is important for you to like play around to see what the best instruction set is so that your AI assistant will be working perfectly when it's just deployed on your application. Again, big hitting items here is that threads are infinite. You don't need to worry about drag. You don't need to worry about chunk size. You don't need to worry about context length. API takes care of all of that and gives you the best results. I've personally checked that OpenAI's assistant API does better than GPT-4 calls through a vector database using drag. So take it for what it is. Please try it on your own and get back to me with some results. So there you have it, folks. That is the assistance API in a nutshell. OpenAI expects this to be used in a wide ranging of applications for people building their own AI assistants. And I believe it is going to usher in a new age of very smart AI agents that are outsourcing their backend to a more powerful model. You can grab all of the code in my GitHub. The links are below and the Medium article where I've described this entire process. The links are below for that as well. I'm going to leave you all to do more building and uh, talk to you later.